Guys, I'm going to be trying something new with this video. It's a shorter video than usual. I'm going to be talking about a fascinating new paper on dark matter that I think you're going to find really interesting, but I'll cover some of the fundamental science of dark matter as well so that you can have the background to appreciate it. First though, let me thank Private Internet Access for sponsoring this concept video. If you're watching this on a public network, then your privacy is vulnerable. Private Internet Access is a leading virtual private network or VPN provider. This means all your internet traffic goes through a secure VPN tunnel. Your IP address is hidden and all your data is encrypted so no one can spy on you or steal your data. Your digital privacy is safe no matter where you are and no logs are ever kept. It also gives you IP cloaking. This means that you can be almost anywhere in the world online without physically being there. So you can unlock geo-restricted content from sites like YouTube, Hulu, and Netflix. It's available on all platforms, Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and others. And a single subscription will protect up to 10 devices at a time. If you click the link in the description right now, you'll get a whopping 77% off, complete digital privacy for less than $3 a month, and three extra months are free. And there's no risk because they give you a 30-day money-back guarantee. It's a great deal. Check them out at the link in the description. All the matter that's visible to us constitutes only about 18% of the total matter that we think actually exists in the universe. How do we know that this other 82% actually exists when we can't see it? Well, one way we can tell is by the way that galaxies rotate. When all the known mass of a galaxy, like the Milky Way galaxy, is taken into account, we find that the outermost stars of the galaxies are moving way too fast, given the gravitational attraction that can be calculated. The total gravity would be too weak to keep these stars bound within the galaxy. They should fly apart and be ejected at the speeds that they're rotating. When you calculate what the gravity of the galaxy would need to be in order to observe the rotational speeds that we observe, you can calculate the mass that should be there, but isn't visible. In fact, our Milky Way galaxy should be surrounded by a large halo of this unknown mass and thus unknown matter. Since we can't see it and we don't know what it is, we are in the dark about it. That's one of the reasons it's called dark matter. Dark matter is an appropriate term because we can't seem to detect it no matter how hard we try. The matter does not seem to interact with ordinary matter, at least not in ways that we can currently detect. For example, it does not emit any light nor interacts with ordinary things in any way that we can detect except through gravity. One candidate for what it could be is a weakly interacting massive particle or WIMP, which is heavy and is electromagnetically neutral. Scientists have tried detecting it in liquid xenon baths via sensors on silicon chips and the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva. They've even studied heavy stars to see how they might be affected when moving through this halo of dark matter. But so far, to no avail. It has remained elusive. But in a new paper published in the journal Physical Review Letters, physicist Rebecca Leanne, a postdoctoral researcher, at Stanford's Slack Lab and Yuri Smirnov at The Ohio State University have proposed a clever way to detect them, heat from exoplanets. According to their calculations, certain kinds of dark matter could drastically increase the temperatures of exoplanets near the center of our galaxy. Exoplanets are planets outside our solar system. These mainly consist of planets around other stars and rogue planets roaming freely, not bound to any star. As exoplanets pass through the dark matter halo, the dark matter can scatter and then get captured by the exoplanets. Dark matter typically goes right through ordinary matter without interacting in any way. But once in a while, a dark matter particle can nudge ordinary particles like protons, slowing it down just a little bit. This is analogous to hitting a billiard ball with a grain of sand. This is called scattering. The change is slight, and very hard to detect. But if you accumulate enough of these collisions, then the dark matter slows down enough to be captured by the planet's gravity. Over time, a lot of dark matter particles can become captured, especially by very massive exoplanets. At high concentrations, these particles can collide and annihilate each other. This would release energy in the form of heat. And this heat is absorbed by the planet. The temperature of the planet should thus increase. How much of an increase in temperature would we see? Well, according to Leanne, it would be quite significant. Temperatures of some of these planets could be in the ballpark of 1,000 Kelvin, which is about 700 degrees Celsius 
or 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. This is compared to a prediction of only 200 Kelvin or negative 73 degrees Celsius or negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit for planets without this source of energy from dark matter. So according to their calculations, Jupiter-like exoplanets, which we would expect to have surface temperatures of well below freezing, may be broiling hot. So one question is, how would you know that the heat of a planet is due to dark matter and not due to some random heat source? According to Leanne, the giveaway would be if you see a pattern of too many planets that are way too hot and their temperatures are correlated with the dark matter density of our galaxy. The dark matter density, for example, is thought to be greatest near the center of our galaxy. So if exoplanet temperatures get higher as the planets get closer to the center, then this would be a smoking gun. Another question you might have is, why not search for this heat using neutron stars instead of exoplanets, since they have much more gravity and so would be more strongly affected by heat from dark matter annihilation. The main reason is that there are comparatively few neutron stars in our galaxy compared to exoplanets. For example, the total number is thought to be about 1 billion, but the number of exoplanets is estimated to be at least 300 billion. In addition, exoplanets are much easier to see from far away because they're much larger. A neutron star is only about 20 kilometers in diameter, typically. But an exoplanet is 50,000 to 200,000 kilometers in diameter. Generally, the bigger the planet is, the better candidate it is for this kind of heat detection. Relatively small planets like Earth or Venus are too small to accumulate huge quantities of dark matter. So the ideal candidate would be planets larger than Jupiter called super Jupiters, which can be 10 times bigger. These would potentially have a lot more dark matter accumulating in them, and so should display higher temperatures than expected. One thing to keep in mind is that this paper was based on calculations, not observations. So now the question is, how do we actually observe these exoplanets and detect their heat? Well, it so happens that we humans are about to launch the world's best telescope and thermometer soon. It's called the James Webb Telescope, or JWST, and it's scheduled to launch later this year in 2021. This is an infrared telescope, ideal for heat detection, and will be the most powerful space telescope ever built. So metaphorically speaking, the stars may be aligning in such a way that we humble humans may soon solve one of the most perplexing mysteries in the cosmos, the nature of dark matter. It's a great time to be alive if you're a science enthusiast like me. And if you like this concept video, let me know by leaving a like. And if you have a question, post it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. I'll see you in the next video, my friend.